Bibles to Matthew chapter 1. I know I've told a good many of you, but it's been a pretty busy week in Pine Forest Baptist Church this week and in our community. It's been a lot that's been going on. And so the question becomes, what do we do when things just doesn't work out like we think they ought to? How do we go through life? What makes us able to stand firm on the Word of God? What makes us able to get up in the morning and trust the Lord? I think it's found in this passage of Scripture that we're going to read. And I want you to pay attention to what it says because it's very important. It's the basis of our faith. So I ask that you stand out of respect to the reading of God's Word. Matthew chapter 1 beginning with verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, Do not be afraid to take to your Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife. He did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we humble ourselves before you today. Lord, because you're a good and gracious God, and Lord, because you loved us so much that you sent your Son, the only begotten Son, we call him Jesus. And you sent him here, Lord, to seek and to save that which was lost. And Lord, that's who we are. For Father, once we were lost, but now we are found. And Lord, without you, there would be no hope and there would be no way that we can continue to go through life. We would be drifting aimlessly. So Lord, I pray today that your Holy Spirit will seek out our souls, look into the very depths of our heart. And Father, if there's one here this morning that's lost and without you, I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will touch them. And draw them into your kingdom. That you will give them faith. That they will come to know you as a personal Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father God, for all that you do for us. For meeting our needs before we ask. Thank you for being the God that you are. And it's in your Son's name we lift up this prayer. Amen. I want to remind you of some things that maybe you know. But Matthew was written sometime between 40 A.D. and 70 A.D. The exact date is not known, but we do know it's after Jesus' death for a few years after his death. So probably the earliest writing would be around 40 A.D. We know that it was written before 70 A.D. by the time the Romans came in, destroyed Jerusalem, and they were dispersed. So sometime between 40 and 70 A.D., Matthew wrote his gospel account. Last week we talked about the genealogy of Jesus. And his line points that he is the son of David, which gives him 
to claim to be the heir of the kingdom of Israel. Today we're going to look at the birth of Jesus, which tells us that He is the Son of God. And those two things together tell us that He is our Savior and He has the right to be our Lord because He is our Savior. I was thinking about babies, so last night I got on the internet and I began to look at a few things. And in, what is it called, Genesis World Records, the Book of World Records, did you know the largest baby was born in 1879 to a Canadian woman? 23 pounds and 12 ounces. Now I'm not, I I would never want to be a woman to have a 23 pound that's a big baby. That's, that, that is a record, right? I, I remember our, our children, Susan, with about eight pounds. Huh? Seven fourteen. And she screamed enough with a seven fourteen. I didn't want a 23 pound baby. Also, I thought was interesting, in March 1879, that same year, there was a guy born named Albert Einstein. He's a pretty smart fellow. Pretty smart. And in November of 1918, there was a man born named Billy Graham. I kind of like to listen to him preach, even though he's gone to be with the Lord. From time to time, I still pull up some of his sermons on the internet. Listen to Dr. Graham as he preached the word and the kingdom down from heaven. So those are some births, but there's no birth like the one that happened 2,000 years ago when Jesus came with purpose to seek and to save us. And see, that's where we miss it. We like to say He came to seek and save the lost world. He came for lost people. He came for those that needed Christ. But if you're a child of God, you need to understand that He came for you. When Jesus came to this world some 2,000 years ago, I understand that He came, He was born to a virgin named Mary, and He came for me. He was born into this world for Andy May. He died on that cross for Andy May. It is a very personal relationship between me and my Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't have that personal relationship, if you have not applied it in that sense, then you really don't know Christ in the way you need to know Christ. He came here for you. For you as a person. Because He loved you as an individual. He knows every hair on your head. He knows every thought in your mind. He knows everything there is to know about you. And He came for you. We like to be lumped in a crowd. We don't like to think that Christ came just for me. But He did. And He's going to remind you of that. As Paul says... You will answer for every word and deed because He paid the price. He paid the price. Three brief points this morning. They're very brief. We're not going to be here that long with the sermon this morning. And so the first point is found in verse 18 and it's called Mary's reasoning. So just look at verse 18 with me. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as followed. After His mother Mary was married to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Now there's some key words in there. The first word is after. After his mother Mary. Notice, is not ever mentioned his father Joseph. It's his mother Mary, because his father is not Joseph. After is a key word. Another word is before they came together. After they're engaged, before they sealed the relationship intimately, notice this, with child. She was with child. 
after they were engaged, before they had an intimate relationship, she had a child. She was pregnant. She's a young girl. They married very young, probably around 14 to 15 years of age. And so this is somewhat shocking. And so we need to see her mindset. So I want you to to mark your place here and go with me to Luke's Gospel and chapter 1. She has some thinking to do. And so in Luke chapter 1, and we want to look, we want to begin looking at verse 35. Luke 1 35. Well, we'll start with verse 34. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I do not know a man? The angel said, You're going to have a child. She responds, How can this be? I've never had an intimate relationship with a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now look down at verse 38. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your Word. That is the key in her mindset. I will be obedient to your word. This is a shocking revelation. Number one, if you put your pl- yourself in her place, to have an angel speak to you would be shocking in itself. Then to be told that you're going to have a child and you're not ever going to have an intimate relationship to have that child would also be a shocking revelation. She has a decision to make. The Bible says she ponders over these things. And in the end, her mindset is, if God says this is what needs to be done, I trust the Lord. I am a child of God. I have faith in God. Whatever God says, whatever His Word tells me to do, that I will do. It's hard to find Christians like that today. We will argue with the Scriptures. Because we don't want to do what God, God's precious and holy word tells us to do. We'll try to get around it. We understand the Bible. We're a highly educated society. We can read God's word. We're not what we call stupid people. So we can understand. We have more college graduates than ever before. We can read the Bible. We can understand the Bible. Yet... We choose to do what we want to, even though we understand what God's Word word tells us to do. We choose not to. So Brother Wayne Roberts came into the office, and he said, We're not going up in Sunday school, we're going down. And so I gave him a few little excuses. Told him, don't worry, it's going to be all right. And this is some of the excuses I gave him. Mississippi State was playing football up at Starkville. Ole Miss was playing football at Oxford. We had fall festival here last night and people are tired. We have funerals that went on. And so I just... But you want to know the truth of the matter? We just don't care about God's Word. Right? Because the Bible says, Forsake not the assemblings of ourselves together, as some are in the habit of doing. And here is Mary that has shocking revelations and she says, whatever God says for me to do, that's exactly what I'm going to do. But we can't do it. But then there's also the little part about let's magnify the Lord. you see it there? And I think we need to go to Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. And I have it marked. I think I have it marked. And so I want to read it to you. 
For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is her son. This is God. And she understands. And she says, my soul will magnify the Lord. So that's Mary's reasoning behind what she's heard. Let's see what Joseph's reasoning is going to be. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, then... Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man. I read that and I thought, you know, a just man, a righteous man. That's in the group with Abraham and Job and Israel, Noah. A just man, a saved man, trying to figure out what's going to happen because he could put her away. He could kill her. He could have her stoned. Just read Deuteronomy. He's trying to figure out what to do. And he's not an older fella either. He's a young man with a young wife. What's he going to do? Then Joseph, her husband being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. He cared about. He was a caring person. Why? Because he was a just man. He was a man of compassion. But while he thought about these things, he was thinking. Well, I like that. I like people that think. Think about what's going on. Reason out every side, not just your side, but every side. Think about what other people think. Think about what God's Word says. Continue to think, think, think. So what's he going to do becomes a question. Just man, compassionate man, trying to make up his mind. And then you come to God's reality. You come to verse 21 and you get God's reality. Notice what it says. The end of verse 20, the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David. That's the genealogy. Joseph, you're the son of David. You're in that line. You're just man. Do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Do not fear. How many times do we hear God tell people, do not fear? I go to the hospital and I tell them, don't worry. I I want want you to be honest. If you've had surgery, and I've come to see you having surgery, how many times have I asked you not to worry? Lift your hand. If I've told you not to worry, lift your hand. Don't worry, and I'll say what? Let me do what? Let me worry for you. Because if I worry, if I'm going to worry for you, guess what? Ain't nobody going to worry. Because, well, number one, I'm not having the surgery, Ms. Melanie, you know. I'm not the one going under the knife or whatever. But the real reason is I trust God. I know what God can do. And God says, Joseph, don't worry. This is my child. And I've got things for him to do. His name's going to be Jesus, which is Joshua. And I grow more and more able to trust the Lord. Last night, my faith jumped a little more. Now, I'm going to get emotional on you. I'm going to try not to. It's been a pretty busy week, right? I wasn't here long when I was here before. 
But in that old building, Brock, there was a group of kids that sat right about here. You remember that? There's a whole bunch of y'all. Laura remembers. And Anna was one of those kids. And her parents are struggling. And Charlie Brown came to see me the day after, and he's struggling because they lost a kid. And you wonder how we can get through it. Well, Jesus came, y'all. And Wednesday night I went to visitation and the questions were asked. And, and I, I want to give Paul Davis, if you know Paul Davis uh, from, from North Crest, he did an excellent job at the funeral answering that question. Why? Catherine, would you bring Deacon? Last night at the Fall Fest, hey Deacon, I'm going to try to hold him. This little man was born pretty early, right? How long? How many? 12 weeks, 12 weeks early. How long did y'all stay in the hospital? Three and, a half months. Three and a half months. And had to break his jaw? And how often did they break his jaw? Well, they broke, they broke it, and then they wired it back together and uh, twisted some wires to get it. Yeah. Every day they were really breaking his jaw, every day. Yeah. And he couldn't walk, right? And they had to break his feet or broke his foot. And did all that. Mm -hmm. And last night you put him on the floor. Mm -hmm. And he is healthy. And he walks around. And if you didn't know it, don't fall out of my hands. <laughs> we'll have to go through all that again. <laughs> and if you didn't know it, you just wouldn't know. And so you wonder how we can get through. God came so we can get through. Thank you, Kathy. He came so we can get through. It's not going to be easy every time. And we've, had, we've seen God move in mighty ways. We've seen God heal people. Summer was here last night at the, at the fest. And, and we, we see it. Emily's got her feelings and she's walking around. We see it happening, but I want you to know that Adam and Eve brought sin into this world and we're going to face death and trials and tribulations and it's going to be hard. Never let a preacher tell you you're going to have an easy life if you come to Christ. That's not the, the case. It's always a lie when you hear that. That's straight from Satan. And these preachers that tell you that are telling you a lie. But this is what Christ said. If you just trust me, I came here. He said, I came here so I'll know what you go through and I can take you through it. If you just trust me, we can go through it together. And you have a church family here. And if you're lost and without Christ, you're missing it. Jesus came for you. For you. For you as a person. And He loves you. And He wants you to come to His kingdom today. Jesus means the Lord's salvation. Jehovah with us. God saves. Today won't you come to Christ. Today. And you may be a Christian. And you need a church home. And I'm telling you, this is the church you want to be part of. Judy was telling the kids about the treasures. These guys cut grass, and our church takes meals out. And they're building up treasures for heaven. And we've got ministers here that love you, and Brother Andrew loves our kids, and he loves you, and Brother Wayne ministers to people. It's a blessing to have ministers that love you. Just trust the Lord. 
He loved you enough to come die for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you've been good to us. In the worst of times, you're always there. Lord, I pray today that you just touch hearts and change lives. And draw people into your kingdom with your love and your grace. Open our eyes that we might see the truth. Give us the strength to step up and to come in faith. Oh, Father God, whatever our decision might be today, give us strength and courage to make that decision. For it's in your Son's name we pray.